Faith comes by hearing. Another way to say that is, is it's activated by hearing the word of God. And it also grows by hearing the word of God to the point that when you have faith as a mustard seed, Jesus said, you will say unto a mountain, be removed and be cast in the sea, and it will obey you. If we can get to a faith the size of a mustard seed, but the only way we get there is by hearing the word of God and trusting what we're hearing instead of always finding ways to not believe it. There are a lot of eloquent, well-spoken theologians who rob a person of their faith. They will rob you of faith. Their commentary will destroy your faith because it came from men, not from God. Listen to the Holy Spirit above me, above any ancient theologian. Listen to God, listen to the Holy Spirit in you, and listen to scripture alone. I can help, but I am merely a steward of God's word. I'm only a man. You must read the word of God for yourself, hear the word of God for yourself, allow the Holy Spirit to teach you through his word. You actually don't need another teacher other than the Holy Spirit. That's a constant. Jesus said that repeatedly. It's in the epistles. You have the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit teaches you. Romans chapter 10, verses 9 through 15. If you declare with your mouth, Jesus is Lord, and I do declare that, Jesus is Lord, Yeshua HaMashiach, He is the Lord. If you declare with your mouth, Jesus is Lord, and believe in your heart that God raised Him from the dead, you will be saved. For it is with your heart that you believe and are justified, and it is with your mouth that you profess your faith and are saved. Notice the faith even exists before the profession. We saw that in Acts, Cornelius and his family believed in their hearts. They received the Holy Spirit before they even professed it out of their mouth. So we continue on verse 10, for it is with your heart that you believe and are justified, and it is with your mouth that you profess your faith and are saved. As scripture says, anyone who believes in him will never be put to shame. For there is no difference between Jew and Gentile. The same Lord is Lord of all and richly blesses all who call on him. For everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. Listen, this is something that people forget, that he is the same Lord of all, okay, so that everybody is welcome, okay, everybody, everybody is welcome. You've probably started to believe in some sort of walls between you and other people. No. Everyone is welcome. There's no difference between Jew and Gentile. Okay, everyone is welcome. And then notice this, and richly blesses all who call on him. God is eager to bless you and favor you. If he's given you Jesus Christ, what will he not give you? Stop doubting him. This is a call to faith. You put faith that Jesus is your savior, but you don't trust him that he's your healer. You don't trust him that he's gonna provide for you. You don't trust him to do miracles. You don't trust him in other areas. You are missing out on the riches of God's blessings because you're believing only part of the truth. I don't know who needs to hear that tonight. One of you needs to hear that. Multiple of you need to hear that. You must have faith in all of it. You're not supposed to just believe that he forgives you of all your sins. You must believe everything because God is eager to bless you richly. If God gave you his own son, what will he not give you? Stop telling him it's not his will to bless you. It is his will to bless you. If it's in his word, it's his will. I'm not talking about televangelists who talk about just getting rich all the time. God does talk about material provision though in his word. So if he has promised it, you are a recipient and an heir through faith in Jesus Christ. If his word promises healing, and it does, but you don't believe that it's his will to heal, you will not receive that blessing. You must believe the words of Jesus. Then you will receive what it is that he's promised. You must believe and obey and you'll receive. So we've heard a lot about faith, but what is faith? See, if a person is saved by faith, it's pretty important that we know what faith is. Verse, uh, Hebrews chapter 11, verse one actually gives a definition for faith. Now faith is confidence 
in what we hope for and assurance about what we do not see. I'll read that again. Now, faith is confidence in what we hope for and assurance about what we do not see. Now, when we're talking about faith tonight, you haven't seen Jesus. You haven't seen heaven. When you trust in God's word, what that is, is a confidence that what you're hoping for in the future is your reality. It is truth that Jesus is alive, that heaven is real, and that it is your destination. You're also trusting and believing that sin has condemned you, that hell is real, and that hell is your destination if you do not put your faith in Jesus Christ. So it's a confidence in what you're hoping for, and you're hoping for what you've read in the scriptures. You're putting your confidence in the scriptures. The scriptures give you hope that you are loved by God, that salvation is available for you, that a new life is available for you, that God accepts you and will welcome you and adopt you into his family. In fact, I have one of our Legacy Housing shirts on that it specifically quotes scripture, says adopted into sonship, which comes from Romans and Ephesians, that we are adopted into sonship in Christ, that we used to be Sorry, this way. We used to be unadopted. We used to be invisible. We used to be shut out. We used to be dissonant. We used to be shipwrecked. But now we are adopted into sonship in Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. And so what I'm what I'm sharing with you tonight is that you read the word of God. It gives you hope that you can have a family and be loved. And when you will get, put your confidence, put your trust in that hope that you read about in scripture, you actually receive it. It actually becomes yours. Okay. And then the other half, it says assurance about what we do not yet see, what we're not seeing yet. It means that faith is deeper than what your eyes physically see. Every person who is healed by Jesus in the Gospels, they could see that Jesus was going to do it before it actually happened. They really believed and were confident that Jesus was going to heal them. The woman with the issue of blood was so confident, she pushed through all the crowd and grabbed his cloak. She didn't even need him to look at her or say anything to her. She just believed that the power of healing was in him, and it did. It flowed out of him, and Jesus goes, who touched me? My power flew, just flew out of me. Who touched me? And, and the woman says, it was me. And he congratulated her on her faith. He was saying, woman, your faith has healed you. And what it was was that she had faith. She had confidence. She was certain of what she hoped for. Her hope was that Jesus was her healer. Her hope was that even though she hadn't seen herself be healed yet, that she would be healed. Faith believes things before you see them in reality. You must trust the word of God before it becomes reality. And in fact, it is your faith that makes it reality. If the woman with the issue of blood would not have had faith that what her reality was going to be was healing, she would have never chased down Jesus and grabbed his cloak in order to be healed. Notice her faith led to her actions. You must believe what the word of God says, act on it, and you will receive it in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. I pray that you are receiving this tonight. This is important truth. So much of the church is forgetting the blessings and the promises of God. So much of the church is forgetting the commandments of God because we're not trusting what God says. If you will have confidence in what you're hoping is true in the scripture, if you will be assured that what you do not see is still your reality, if you will trust God, you will receive what he has promised. Hallelujah. You must believe in order to receive Salvation is available to every person. Jesus died for all sin of all mankind. The scriptures are actually really clear that Jesus died for everybody. But why isn't everybody saved? Because not everybody trusts and believes and has faith that that is true. And you cannot receive it until you believe it. You cannot have the promises of God until you trust the God who gave the promise. Hallelujah. You must believe. Folks, I'm calling you to repentance tonight. Listen, the Holy Spirit is calling you to repentance. Listen to me. 
hear me. There is a lot in the Bible that you are not believing. Oh, this is for someone. There is a lot in the Bible you are not believing. You believe that Jesus was Lord and Savior, but you read other things and you don't believe it. And you have plenty of other Christians who don't believe it too, so you all feel safe together because you're not believing it together. So you say, oh yeah, my pastor doesn't believe this. He, you know, he has no faith that this is true, blah, blah, blah. You, just, you, you know Psalm chapter 103 says, forget not all his benefits. He forgives all our sins and heals all our diseases. There are a lot of believers out there who only believe half of that promise. They're believing that Jesus forgave all their sins. Hallelujah. But then they don't believe that he heals all of our diseases. That's just one. For some of you, it's the seventh day Sabbath. The seventh day Sabbath is established in Genesis before the law. It was given as a gift, but you read it and you see it as an inconvenience and as a burden because you don't trust. And you found a bunch of other Christians who agree and don't trust what God's word says about the seventh day Sabbath. You know, there's no abolition of the seventh day Sabbath anywhere in scripture. You cannot find it. In fact, the Catholic Church who instituted Sunday worship and said that's the new Sabbath, they affirmed during the Council of Trent that there is nothing in Scripture that abolishes the seventh day Sabbath. They affirmed it. They simply said the church has decided that worship is on Sunday, the Sabbath is on Sunday. You can worship God and get into the Word on any day. Today's Monday, it's the second day of the week. It's okay to preach any day. But listen, and that's just one. You read, you read Jesus says, sell your possessions and give to the poor and you will have treasure in heaven. You're not trusting that you will actually have treasure in heaven. What you're believing is that if you sell your treasures here on earth and if you sell your possessions and, and, and you give to the poor, you're believing that you're going to have lack, that you're not going to have provision, that God's not going to provide for you. And you're also not really believing that you're going to have treasure in heaven, whatever that is. And so you're not doing it. I'm getting real tonight. We're... We're an hour and a half into the, the stream, so if you just joined, you've joined at a meteor part. But this is truth. If you just joined, this is for you to hear. Listen, you're not doing it because you're not trusting it's true. When Jesus says, sell your possessions and give to the poor and you'll have treasure in heaven, you must believe that that heaven you haven't seen yet and that treasure you haven't seen yet is real and that when you obey Jesus and sell your possessions and give to the poor so that you have treasure in heaven, look, it's in the gospel of Luke. You sell your possessions, give to the poor, have treasure in heaven. You're not doing it because you don't believe that it's true. God is calling you to repentance tonight, to be humbled. Will you let yourself finally be humbled before the Almighty God again? You know you're not supposed to just be humbled before Him on the day of salvation. Do you know every day is to be a day of humility before the living and Almighty God, Yahweh? Do you know that because of this trust in Jesus, that trust means that we, we trust the commandments He's given? Do you know that when Isaiah prophesied that surely our sicknesses he has borne and Matthew 8, 17 verifies that Jesus bore our sicknesses and that he healed all the sick, but you don't believe it. You only believe that he bore all of our sins, but you don't believe he bore all of our sicknesses. So you only receive half the promise. I don't care. I really don't care how many Christians, how many websites, how many books, how many sermons, how many theologians, how many commentaries say something that isn't true. I don't care how often they say that it doesn't work a certain way. Listen, the Bible and the Bible only is the truth. Everything else is noise. Sometimes theologians say inspired things. Sometimes you're going to come and hear me preaching and you're going to hear from God. Sometimes the Holy Spirit is speaking and yes, it is coming directly from God. But all the time, the word of God is everlasting and true. 
hallelujah. What is it in God's word that you're not believing because that's why you're not obeying? Faith is confidence in what we hope for. We hope that we'll actually have treasure in heaven. Therefore, when Jesus says, sell your possessions and give to the poor, we do it because we actually believe him that we'll have treasure in heaven, that my eternal bank account is way more important than my earthly bank account. When we see from Genesis to Revelation, the Sabbath is the seventh day. We don't say, oh, those Messianics are weird or those Seventh-day Adventists are weird or blah, blah, blah. Listen, Protestant church inherited a lot of pagan stuff from the Catholic church. Be done with it. Accept the Bible and the Bible only. The true Protestant Reformation was actually sola scriptura. It was the Bible and the Bible only. Sadly, the church welcomed back in a bunch of pagan stuff, even though a Reformation took place. Folks, the Holy Spirit is calling you to obey the Lord Jesus. If you trust that Jesus truly is Savior and Lord, then believe what he says and do what he says. 